you know, so this for bones. Yeah. And we drilled a hole through and just made that the ladder. Mm -hmm. And there's a natural drama that just happened. Here you go. No. Woo! That's it for today. All is good in Macomb County. I was celebrating my 11th birthday. In order to create the feel, in the environment we do, things need to have a feeling. They have to appear aged. When an item is in the weather for a long period of time, it tends to fade, which is really good. In our case, we're not gonna have a lot of weather on it, so we wanna give it that already weathered look. So a few days ago, we found this plate at an antique shop. We were going around trying to find stuff. It's part of what we consider treasure uh, booty for the, the pirate chest booty. And as it stands, this is a pretty nice piece. But to add our flair to it is to give it a little more patina, a little bit of color. We talk very often about living in the emotions of things and how things make us feel. Well, amazingly enough, it's the fine details that tend to really draw us in. In most of what I do, I use one brush, I don't wash it. I don't have a, a palette full of colors. If I have a bin of just paint that we've had from all different kinds of things, but it's that idea that when someone's immersed in the project, they'll feel just that extra little sensation of wow. And by doing things like this and spending the time, that extra little detail really draws people all the way in. And I'm just darkening this backdrop a little bit. So automatically now we're starting to get just a little bit of pop. Something's happening. So we'll go through here. You're looking at me. You're looking at me to like, I know anything. I'm kind of an idiot. No particular, I'm not pre-thinking this out too much and going, oh, I've got to have this color here and that color there. Instead, what I'm doing is just kind of playing. just adding a little bit of this and I don't I don't want a lot of color again the idea isn't isn't to paint this a solid color it's just to give it a hint we want this to look old we want it to look like it's it's been in the hull of a ship and then it's been thrown on the sand and then it takes some of that beating that that churning that change to create the look so there it is that's all I'm gonna do but it gives it just enough to be different than what we started out with. There you go. Was that it? You like it? Let's just play. We picked up at an antique shop a really cool dagger. Now, when you run across items like this that are really cool prop items, well, this is a great item for us to use in a project, but if we only have one and we need 10, so this item we're going to create out of plastic. But we're gonna start by making the mold of this. So that's what we're getting started with, and here's what the process is. I need to start by making a case to put it in. The box isn't perfect, it doesn't have to be. The idea is, Let's just create the space. We want to maximize the use of the mold making material and minimize the waste. The first rubber casting is one half of the knife. So I'm going to embed the bottom half of the knife in clay. So when I push the knife down into it, I'm literally gonna push half of the knife into the clay. What'll happen then is if half of the knife is into the clay, the other half is sticking above it, which when I pull my, pour my mold material in there, will form to the shape of what's left of the knife. For me, this is about getting the job done. I need to create a copy of that knife. You wanna make something, a hundred of something, you're gonna to wanna to be more precise and more concerned with exactly how you make the mold. In my particular case, it doesn't matter how we put it together. The other thing to be concerned about 
is when you think about doing a casting, how are you going to get the casting material into the mold? I'm going to make a little ball that's gonna set right on the end of the blade so that when I cast, that becomes a pour spout. Once we have our item, we need to have a system to allow them to go together exactly. So if I don't put this together exactly, the way it's supposed to go together, then I'm never going to get the result. If you notice, these pieces fit together perfectly. And I'm gonna create a channel right down the side of this. That when I pour this, that channel is gonna fill with latex. And when that channel fills with latex, when I flip it over, I'll have what's called a keyway that then my next piece of material will attach to. I'm gonna do one on each side of the knife blade. This will allow me to line up that knife blade exactly. Now again, we gotta, we've gotta always be thinking about the reverse, what it looks like opposite to what we have here because that's what we're creating. This is Mold Max 40. This is the product that we're going to use to create the mold for this particular project. What I'm gonna have to do is measure out the amount that I need. I don't know exactly the amount that I'm going to need. I would rather be thicker than thinner, so I'm gonna overestimate the amount of material that I need. There's an A and a B. So there's a gallon of latex, and then there's the accelerant. Whatever I decide I'm going to use by weight, I need one-tenth of this to that. What I wanna do with that, to be sure, is mix it. Now this material will not set up on its own. It'll stay liquid, ooey, and gooey like this till the end of time. It needs a part B. I'm gonna to try to measure out a quarter of the container. So we have two pounds, 11 ounces, 43 ounces. One tenth of that, we need 4.3 ounces of this material. There you go, 4.3 ounces. Mix it into our mold material, looking for that consistent green. Now what the instructions would recommend is to degas this. If we we're going for perfect casting, we would absolutely want to make sure that we degas this. We get some air bubbles in this, we're not super concerned. I'm going to spray the release because I want that to be able to release from the latex when I pull it out of the mold. There's our mix, there's our mold, a nice green color. And now we wait. That's gonna take about 12 hours to set up. Once that's set up, we can demold it, take it apart, flip it over, and clean all of that clay off of the, late, the latex that we just poured. And then we'll re-screw it all together and pour latex on the other side. So that ultimately when we're both sides are done, we'll have a negative space where that sword used to be when we take the sword out of the inside. Oh, we missed it. I think I pulled my hammy. I don't know if I can do that again. Who am I? I I'm a day laborer. I wandered onto the job site. Um, actually, Al picked me up at Home Depot. Uh, I go there from time to time and find extra work. Raul is what I go by. Unless I'm working at Lowe's and then I go by Juan. Anthony Talati, what do you want? I am having the treat and the most fun possible by getting to help work on this amazing pool project. I might make that the final All right, let's look at Rick holding the reflector there. Thanks, Rick. That was amazing. We couldn't have done it without you. <laughs> the type of pool that we build is what we've called a hybrid. It's a cross between a standard traditional vinyl liner pool, which is a steel wall cement bottom with a liner in it, and a gunite pool. And a gunite pool is the traditional concrete pool that you'll see at most hotels around the world. And that's a, a re-rod steel shell tied with cement that's then shot into it to create the shape of the pool. Our pool is a hybrid. It's a mixture of both of those. We'll tie all the rebar shell for the gunniting part, and then we'll shoot the next part. What we're doing today is we're getting prepared to shoot the sun shelf. When we build a hybrid pool, we have a steel wall for the vinyl liner section, but then we also still have to have the gunite section, the concrete section, which requires rebar. And the reason being is rebar, steel has tensile strength. 
meaning it has strength when it bends. But it has no compression strength, so I can smack it with a hammer and it'll flatten out. But it has that ability to, to bend, which is tensile strength. Where the concrete has no tensile strength. If you try to bend concrete, it snaps. But if you press down on concrete, it has a lot of compressive strength. So by the time you put the steel and the concrete together, you've now increased your tensile strength and your compressive strength, and that's why a pool stays together and doesn't crack. So the other thing that we're doing is we're touching all the steel to steel. What that does is it allows us to bond the steel together because we have voltages, line voltages in the ground from, the, from our electrical grid, there's leaking voltages. We always have to be conscious of electricity in the ground and we want all the steel bonded and grounded together so that we don't have any problems with electrical charge in the water. Secondly, the, the pattern how we tie the steel is based on the strength that we're looking to get. So the tighter the pattern, the more strength uh, that we're, we're gonna achieve in terms of the, the shell itself. I just said you're dancing naked in front of the window. Maybe you like, you know, you like to show your body off or something to all the hot ladies that live in the neighborhood. I, I can tell, I can tell. He doesn't know it, but I saw him dancing in the window upstairs yesterday. But he had his skivvies on, so it was okay. No, no, it was real, real nice for me. I think we'll need another, like one of those. Yeah, like one I think so you, too. Like a backup slash if I want to interview Anthony, say. Uh, uh. Heads up. Ooh, 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 ooh. Good. Mm. You don't need to invent drama. These reality TV shows have all this drama, but we are ripe with it. Couldn't have seen that one coming from a mile away. And she's still recording. And I got attacked by a piece of wood. I didn't. I was just filming, kind of out of the action, but. It hit me and it knocked over the camera. And ow, my ear is burning. But this is, sometimes happens, I guess. Yeah, my stationary camera, the umbrella looks like a new pirate flag. I had to get help, special help, <laughs> to try and secure this tent down. That's actually the homeowner who's helping us. It's just one of those days. We don't need to produce drama. We don't need to over, over create it just normally is it's it's the part of living that things happen and it's how you respond to those things is how your life goes and instead of creating drama and whoa this thing happened the thing happens and you go oh it was a thing that happened we laugh about it move on and it's just a really natural healthy way of doing it fun. You, grab, you grab the phone bye <laughs> bye yeah. katie So once we get an inspection, we need to backfill the steel. In particular, the steel behind, that the vinyl liner steel, the steel walls, because the next step as we shoot the sun shelf and shoot the, the waterfalls and all of that stuff, we also run a, steel, a concrete beam around the top of that pool steel to stiffen the wall that gives us a place to put our stone when we do the stone finish. So yesterday what I did was I put up the form, the basic forms for the back of the sun shelf, and the plumbing. As you can see in the sun shelf, we have the, this is for the in-floor. So part of pre-planning is to make sure when you're doing in-floor systems is where's the plumbing go and at what point does it need to go in. Okay, um, today's Caitlin's birthday, she turns 11 today. Okay. And she's been asking me when she's gonna get to do her interview. So I didn't know if you guys were gonna be here and maybe she did squeeze in. Let's do that. Today. Yes, we'll make sure we stay for that. Perfect. No, you're, you're, you've, been, you've been promoted to sir. Well, I don't know, it's just, again, it's, it's, it's that's, on the, that's on the gods, that's not on me. I, I can't tell you.
<laughs> Dude, I don't know. Most royalty is pretty ugly. You should, because, but not you. Come on now. You're a hottie. Did you say something, Kate, sir? No. I just told the homeowner he's a hottie. I'm not letting you record that. Well, I... Okay. Hey, can you give me my sticker and leave now because you're making me weird? Oh. Awesome. Oh, good stuff. What is on there? Somebody's birthday. When a person chooses to live in the yummy of life. No, I'm not kidding you. Dude, we, we need a pirate send-off for an 11-year-old. Are you kidding? And bring joy to people, not profit bottom line, how much money we make, but rather how can we really enjoy the experience we get to have times and moments All like we just had. Karen, Anthony, Karen, Karen, Anthony. Hi, I'm Karen, no, yeah. whatever. I am the lead artist on site. Al is the big artist. We are at the pirate pool. What happened was the customer this morning had mentioned that it's his daughter's 11th birthday today. Today's Caitlin's birthday, she turns 11 today. And that could have just passed on like another day because to us it might have been just another day. But because we're here and we're part of their lives right now doing the work that we're doing, it was important to honor and acknowledge that birthday as well. So I called back to the office and I said, look, it's Caitlin's birthday. We need to have a party. We need to do something. And Sandy said, what time do we need to be there? Uh, we are an hour and 20 minutes away from our office to get here to this site. But everybody dropped what they were doing. People came from three or four different jobs, all of the office staff. Everybody showed up here to be waiting at 3.30 when the bus dropped her off to be able to wish her a happy birthday. Your wings are on upside down. <laughs> you want to fix them for me? Flying into the ground every time you try to take off. Do you happy birthday to you? Happy birthday, dear Kate. Happy birthday to you. <laughs> We're all dressed in pirate costumes. And that's living in the yummy. That's recognizing that what the, the things that we do are not important on any given day unless it's honoring people. And this is an experience that we'll all remember because we got to be a part of something bigger than ourselves. Caitlin, uh, we're celebrating my 11th birthday. Happy birthday. Thank you. <laughs> We are at a birthday party. I was called in in the middle of a job and you can't say I'm complaining. Awesome! Daddy, look at it! Awesome. <laughs> Kids rule! Yeah. Kids rule! Well, Adults rule! Smart. Adults rule! Did you find it? Alright, what's going on? What am I doing? Go ahead, Kate. Yay! Good company. Yeah, yeah. Company included. Yeah. Oh, here's the fort, too. Puppy! Thank you, everyone! Cheers! Cheers! Fantastic, thank you. The best part of that shot is Loki over your shoulder. Loki Vogue! <laughs> okay, so I have one duty here. There's one thing I do. It's my job to emphasize the wrong syllables when I speak. So well because it confuses everybody. In the
don't need to over dramatize. camera around, maybe we get a better idea. Okay, smile. There you go. You still look like Emperor Palpatine. So I think what we'll do is I think we'll shoot the sun shelf okay. the first day and any of the, you know, it depends on how much mud we have if we get that. He's coming around up there. I ain't seen the sunshine since I don't know when. I'm stuck in both the prison. It's time to move. Okay, so we are at the end of our second shot creek day. Yellow and brown is back in here for the next three months. <laughs> you guys have a good one.